To help with my review of the fall guy, I made a short list of some of the most average things I could think of. I decided the most average car you could drive is a Toyota Corolla. Reliable, affordable, not flashy, gets the job done. And no one is going to notice your car on the highway, assuming it isn't dented on every side like the old Mazda I drove until the transmission fell off in East Cleveland, leaving me feeling the way I imagine a father figure feels when he realizes his son is the protagonist in a superhero movie. The most average food? Lasagna. You won't be upset if you go over to someone's house and they say we're having lasagna, but you probably wouldn't go out to a restaurant for it either, unless you're Garfield. Most average music? Coldplay. Think I'm wrong? Fine. Prove it in the comments. I'm here for all the averages today. Average is the perfect description for the fall guy. I watched it at a drive-in movie theater with a couple of friends and, with some help from five shots of rum, had a decent enough time. And at the end, my friend and I stood up, looked at each other, and said the same thing. Five. The Fall Guy is one of the most average movies to have ever movied. It's a movie you will see once, and then never see again. Not even if you're on a Ryan Gosling or Emily Blunt heater. You won't be upset you saw it, though. You won't feel like you got cheated out of $10. But shoot, man, if I hadn't been taking notes, I'm not sure I'd remember enough to make this video. The movie follows Colt Seavers, who's a stunt guy for a guy named Tom Ryder, both of whom look like Logan Paul if he dyed his beard brown. Colt is working on a movie where Jody, played by Emily Blunt, is a camera woman, and they've got a little thing going on. But everything literally comes crashing down when Colt suffers a serious back injury from a stunt gone wrong. We fast forward to Colt being a valet, and it's super inaccurate. Speaking as a former valet, the car he brings back doesn't have nearly enough dents in it, and probably doesn't smell enough like weed either. Pro tip, do not valet your car if you can avoid it. But while he's working as a valet, he gets a call from Gail Meyer, the big-time movie producer on whose set he suffered his injury, to come work on Jody's directorial debut. When he arrives, however, he realizes Gail's offer wasn't as benign as it sounded. Tom Ryder has mysteriously gone missing, and Gail really brought Colt over to go and find him. So Colt goes on a little quest, with some detective work, action sequences, and plot holes, and finds himself in the middle of a tricky little frame job that he must foil. Some quick plot holes to point out while being vague enough so as not to spoil things. How will framing someone else for a crime accomplish anything if said crime took place in front of a dozen witnesses? How does someone expect the police to believe that someone else offed themselves by zip-tying themselves to a chair, dousing themselves in gasoline, and then lighting themselves on fire? How does a prop sword get stuck in a wall? Why does Ryder's girlfriend attack Colt? Just a couple weird scenes in the movie that don't make sense. But the goal of this movie isn't really to make sense. Each scene is just a vehicle for getting us to the next action scene or the next romantic scene between Colt and Jody. It's an opportunity to make a joke, even meta ones at times. I'm not the first reviewer to compare it to the action comedy movies of the 80s or to point out that, yes, this is an adaptation of a TV show of the same name that came out during the 80s. In fact, if I didn't mention it, that might make me the first of my kind on YouTube. But based on its feel, there were two movies it kept bringing to mind. The first is Lethal Weapon. My parents are huge Lethal Weapon fans. I've seen those movies on TV more times than I can count. It's an 80s action romantic comedy just like The Fall Guy, complete with the bombastic action sequences, quippy humor, and romantic plotline. But it has things The Fall Guy doesn't. It's got a logically consistent plot and truly compelling character development. Lethal Weapon isn't afraid to let the audience take it seriously for a minute, because it knows it will hold up to a serious eye and mind. The Fall Guy relies on you turning your brain off. And that isn't a complete condemnation of the movie, but it's nice when a movie can be enjoyed both ways. Another movie it reminded me of is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It follows a stuntman who goes off on his own little journey. The stuntman is portrayed by a charismatic guy who has to keep the actors he stunts for out of trouble. There's even a scene where Colt sicks a dog on some attackers. But it doesn't hold a candle to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in any way. Colt Seavers isn't on the same plane of existence as Cliff Booth. As cool as Ryan Gosling is, I'm not sure anyone has ever been as cool as Brad Pitt in that movie. The whole movie is a self-proclaimed love letter to stuntmen. Which, I'm not sure it actually does a great job of being that. Sure, the main character is a stuntman, but this film, like, really wants to be a love letter to stuntmen. It even starts with a short message from the director and Ryan Gosling proclaiming it as such. But it feels like it misses a great meta way to really show love to stuntmen. 
The movie isn't afraid to be meta. There's a whole sequence where Colt and Jody discuss the use of split-screen conversations in movies over a split-screen conversation. So my question is, why not be meta with your stunt doubles? Ryan Gosling had four stunt doubles in this movie, and yet in a movie trying to give stunt doubles the acknowledgement they deserve, the stunt doubles receive no acknowledgement. If that's your mission, why not include shots that make it obvious someone else is doing Gosling's stunts? Feels like an unaccomplished mission in many ways. But now on to some praises. Ryan Gosling is Ryan Gosling. He gives a similar performance to the nice guys, a kind of goofy, funny dude who's clearly out of his depth. Emily Blunt and he have good on-screen chemistry, which makes perfect sense seeing as how they're two of the most likable people in Hollywood and two of the few remaining actors that fit that description. Also, shout out Emily Blunt for calling out the strong female lead garbage a while back. Definitely got in a lot of people's good graces with that, and her character refuses to let that idea seep into the movie she's directing. Aaron Taylor Johnson is as at home in this David Leitch movie as he was in Bullet Train, and it took a fair bit of convincing for my friend on my part to get her to believe that Gail and the owner of FC Richmond and Ted Lasso are played by the same actor. So kudos to Hannah Waddingham and everyone involved in transforming her for the role. The action scenes are generally solid, well shot, but not as fun as some of the action sets in David Leitch's other films. There are a couple moments that got genuine laughs from me and my friends, but a lot of the humor falls a bit flat and jokes are dragged on too long. It does give a good-hearted tribute to the immense work put in by stunt doubles and entire film crews to make incredible action scenes come together, and provides a bit of fun insight into other drama that goes down on film sets. Like I said earlier, The Fall Guy may be the most average movie I've ever seen. The plot is pretty basic, with some holes it just wants you to ignore, it has some funny moments with more that fall flat. It's got likable characters with good chemistry between them. Every positive presented in it seems to be canceled out by an equal and opposite negative. It got the job done for a couple hours on a Friday night. And David Leach seems to be fine with that, so I can't complain too much. If he wants to make simple films that entertain me in simplistic ways with my friends, never to be spoken of again after the credits roll, then I'm fine with that. There's definitely a place for those movies, and the drive-in with friends might be that place. Safe? Reliable, predictable, like a frat bro wearing vineyard vines, a have a nice day U2 exchange, a YouTube channel with 240 something subscribers, a perfect 5 out of 10. All right, the sauce. Uh, what? The sauce, I don't know, you're using too much sauce, okay? Review's over. <laughs>